students assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh this is the second lecture this is lecture number 2 this is lecture number 2 for your animal kingdom so we have started animal kingdom and till this point you know about the diversity in animal kingdom on the basis of number 1 on the basis of habitat the different animals which you will find on the surface of the earth based on the habitat i have given you the information about that the second is i have given you the details about the diversity of animals based on their level of organization and third was diversity of animals based on their body plan in which i have shown you that the body plan could be cell aggregate plan it could be blind sack plan and it could be the advanced tube within a tube body plan so in this i have taught you three body plans in this case i have shown you the level of organizations where we have shown cellular level of organization we have shown tissue level of organization and organ and organ system level of organization so i have given you three categories of animals based on the level of organization and as far as habitat is concerned i have given you examples pertaining to the terrestrial habitats pertaining to the aquatic habitats and different other types also now we will focus on the diversity of animals based on the symmetry so today we are going to start understanding about how organisms can vary how organisms could be of various types based on their symmetry okay let us focus this symmetry okay let me uh, clear these points habitat is done diversity based on habitat is done based on level of organization is done based on body plan it's done now we are focusing on the this uh, diversity based on symmetry so this is going to be the fourth criteria fourth basis on which we are understanding the diversity now my dear students what does symmetry mean symmetry literally means that uh, whether the body of organism whether it could be divided into two equal halves or not so we can say that uh, how body is arranged here we see what we see the arrangement arrangement of uh, the body parts of an organism they are arranged differently in different organisms and we focus on whether the organism could be divided into two equal halves or not so this is our point of a uh, uh, you know uh, understanding over here whether we can divide the organism into two equal halves or not according to that we can have two types of organisms one which we will call one type of organism will be asymmetrical asymmetrical once i use the word asymmetrical organisms it means that a asymmetrical organisms or asymmetrical animals they are those organisms which cannot be divided into two equal halves these organisms cannot be divided into two equal halves say for example let me give an example you have amoeba okay the body is irregular it's not possible to divide amoeba into two equal halves so such organisms will be called asymmetrical but on the other hand you have you can think of your cell if you take your body your right side of the body is uh, absolutely equal to the left side of your body so your body can be divided into two equal halves so you will say that there are some organisms which are what they are symmetrical so there could be symmetrical organisms the difference is whether you are capable of dividing them into two equal halves or not as far as these organisms are concerned they cannot be divided into two equal halves but 
if you talk about symmetrical organisms they can be they can be divided they can be divided into two equal halves so their body is divisible into two equal halves now if we look upon symmetrical organisms or if we look at this symmetry it could be itself divided into three types so you have three types of symmetries number one is radial symmetry okay number one is radial symmetry we have to discuss these symmetries in detail number second is there's one more that's called the universal symmetry it's also called uh, spherical symmetry okay spherical symmetry we'll understand this with examples also and number third is the bilateral symmetry by lateral symmetry okay so you have how many types of symmetries? You have radial symmetry, you have universal and spherical symmetry, and you have bilateral symmetry. In all these cases, what you see here, you if you have a body, you can divide this body into two equal halves. Now let us go into the details of uh, these symmetries. Let us first of all talk about the universal symmetry. Let me talk about universal symmetry, universal, or what we call spherical symmetry. Which are the organisms which show this type of symmetry and what is the uh, you know idea with this symmetry here first of all the organism must be uh, in the shape of a sphere so organism must here be spherical in shape so organism must be spherical or you have to think that it must be in the shape of a ball and you will see that you can divide this spherical organisms you will divide you can divide this ball like organism into two equal halves so you can see that here the body could be, yes, it could be divided into two equal halves. But now the question is, what about the plane? What is the what is what will be the plane of division? It could be divided into two equal halves. But what about the plane of division? Uh, two equal halves through through any plane any plane it can go the plane of division can go in any direction through any plane that goes through the center that's the point that goes through the center so if for example you have this organism first of all the criteria is that it must be spherical okay and you can divide this organism into two equal halves by any plane but that plane has to pass through the center so the plane of division could be like this it, you, you you can divide this in this plane into two equal halves okay this line represents the plane of division it could be divided into through this plane of division or through this plane of division or through this plane of division so any plane could be there but that plane has to pass through the center that plane of division can divide this organism into two equal halves the example of this type of uh, organism which shows this type of symmetry is volvox volvox is basically not a single organism it's a colony it's a colonial organism here in case of volvox you have many organisms living in a colony but that colony is what that colony forms a spherical ball like structure and that colony could be divided into uh, equal halves through any plane which passes through the center of that spherical structure okay and even if, if you talk about basic structures if you talk about if an em embryo uh, a ball of uh, cells where you have just the ball of cells the marula that could also be divided into two equal halves through any plane which goes through the center so as far as spherical structures are concerned they have which type of uh, symmetry they have this uh, universal or spherical symmetry where you can divide the organism into two equal halves by means of any plane which goes through or which passes through the center of the organism. Now, the second type of symmetry was what? The second type of symmetry is radial symmetry. Radial symmetry is shown by the organisms like hydra. Okay, you are familiar with hydra. Uh, how does hydra look like? It has a body like this and it has a, the mouth and we have these 
uh, tentacles on the body of a hydra. Now, if you take any plane, let me draw the plane of division with red color. So if I take this plane, which is running from top to bottom, so this plane, this plane of division is running from top, it's going to the bottom. So this plane, it is running from top to the bottom, but it's going through the, it's, it's a type of central axis. It, it is a type of central axis, which runs from uh, this, because this axis has to go through the center of the organism's body, but it goes from top to bottom, dividing this organism into two equal halves. So you have this half and you have this half by means of this plane of division. So here, radial symmetry, in this case, you can remember that any plane that is going to pass, any plane that passes uh, through the central axis so it's it, it it cannot be any so here it was any plane that goes through the center here it is a pl plane that passes through the central axis from where to where from top to bottom okay any plane that passes through the central axis of the organism, okay, from top to bottom of the body. Uh, and divides the organism into two equal halves. If you have this type of the case where you can take any uh, plane, but that plane has to pass from the central axis, that too from the top of the body to the bottom of the body, which divides the organism into two equal halves, then you've got that symmetry, radial symmetry. It is shown by whom? This type of symmetry is shown by this type of symmetry, it is shown by whom? Say, for example, uh, one example I told you, it's shown by Hydra. Okay, even my dear students, some of the jellyfishes, they also show the same type of symmetry. Your sea cucumbers, they also show radial symmetry. Starfish also shows the radial symmetry. Then last but not the least is which type of symmetry? That is bilateral type of symmetry, okay? Bilateral is going to be the most twisted type of symmetry by lateral symmetry, okay? Here, what is the case is that there is only one plane, only one plane. So you do not have the choice over here. There's only one plane that divides the body into two equal halves. Only one plane divides the body into two equal halves. Say, for example, if you have a man, say, for example, this is a human being, okay, and this is the body of an organism. So you will have only one plane. Let me show for uh, understanding purposes. So there will be only one plane. Now I'll show the plane with red color, okay? So this is the plane which runs from top. It runs through the central axis of the body and divides the organism into two equal halves. Here there is a lot of complexity. So there will be only one plane. So this is uh, only plane which divides the body into two equal halves. If that is the case, you have only one plane dividing the organism's body into two equal halves, then you call this uh, uh, symmetry uh, bilateral symmetry, okay? This is shown by whom? This is shown by your analytes, like your earthworms. It's shown by arthropods, like your insects. It's shown by your vertebrates, which involve you also. So these organisms show bilateral uh, symmetry. Now, in case of bilateral symmetry, you can understand or you can remember about some of the terms, which are very, very important. So you have a man here in this uh, diagram. I've drawn a man and I will show you another organism. Let me make a fish. You have to remember some terms over here. Let me make a fish over here. Just a uh, general idea. So say for example, this is the fish over here. Okay. So you have some terms over here. In case of man, you use the word that the side which has this uh, side, 
the head of the body and you have this part you call this topmost part the anterior part of the body okay so anterior part is that part of the body this is the anterior anterior part and this is the anterior part of the fish anterior part how will you remember which part is anterior part anterior part is going to have the mouth so the part of the body which has mouth is called the anterior part here you have the mouth so you will call this topmost part the anterior part of the man which has the mouth now this uh, posterior part say for example this part where you have the anus this part is called the posterior part posterior part of the body has the anus okay similarly my dear students now you have another sides one is called the dorsal side of the body another is called the ventral side of the body now which is the dorsal side of the body dorsal side of the body has the vertebral column so this upper uppermost part of the fish this part of the fish is called the dorsal side now which is our dorsal side the side which has the vertebral column vertebral that side is called the dorsal side here this side the upper side of the body is called the dorsal side the upper side here in case of man the side our back side which has the vertebral column that's called the dorsal side this lower side the belly side lower side the belly side and same is the case our belly side so our belly side is called the ventral side which side is that ventral side and here this side the lower side of the fish this is called the ventral side so you have to remember this these terms also so anterior side is that side which has the mouth like this part of the fish and this part of the man and posterior side is that side which has the anus like this uh, terminal part of the fish this is the posterior side of the fish dorsal side has the vertebral column or it is the upper surface of the fish and vert ventral side is the belly side it is it is the side of the belly uh, which is given the name ventral side of the organism so you have to remember these sides also now uh, based upon the symmetry we saw organisms could be asymmetrical or they could be symmetrical if they are symmetrical they could be having universal symmetry they could be having the radial symmetry or the higher organisms will show will exhibit the bilateral symmetry now let us see the variety the diversity based on the body cavity the other term which i will teach you is going to be the fifth criteria the fifth criteria is the coelom now what is the coelom and how do organisms differ based on the coelom first of all coelom is my dear students the body cavity so there is a cavity inside the body now depending upon whether the cavity is present or not so organisms will either have this body cavity or they will not have this body cavity so you will have conditions called acelomates pseudocelomates and u coelomates let us understand these things in detail so i am showing you over here there is an organism which ha has this layer which is called the ectoderm layer okay you have an ectoderm layer which is going to form the body wall okay ectoderm layer is going to form the body wall we are showing the representation and over here this is let me use a different color for showing you this part let me take uh, this uh, blue color okay so now this here this is the endoderm what is this this is endoderm they are basically the layers in the embryo we call these layers germ layers now we are understanding over here this organism has how many layers it has ectoderm and endoderm endoderm is going to form the gut wall the wall of the digestive system so in the center what you have basically is the gut the digestive tract now in the in this organism there is no cavity means the space between ectoderm and endoderm that is completely filled with cells okay now let me show you over here these are these are what the space in between ectoderm and endoderm ectoderm i have shown with red color 
endoderm I've shown with blue color. Now the space between the two, that space is completely filled by cells. So what is the conclusion? The conclusion is that uh, there is no cavity. What is the conclusion? There is no cavity between ectoderm and endoderm. These organisms will be called a silo mates. They do not have any no body cavity. There is no body cavity in these organisms. And the example for these organisms, which are the organisms which have this type of body organization, uh, if you think about poriferans, the sponges, poriferans, the coelentrates, and if you talk about the platyhelminths, flatworms, platyhelminths, they all are acelomates. Acelomates, that means they do not have any body cavity. The situation is something like this. But now we have the same condition. We have the same condition. Let me make it again. Now again, we have what? We have this layer is which layer? This is the external layer, ectoderm. In the center, what do you have now? With blue, we show the endoderm. So this is our endoderm layer. Okay. Now in between, you have now a cavity, which is going to be, which must be lined with another layer, which is called mesoderm. But here, you do not see that uh, mesoderm is absolutely present. What is the situation over here? You will find pouches like these. You will find a pouch like here, a pouch like here, a pouch like here. These pouches are layered with, they are layered with what? So you have another layer of cells over here. The green layer which I'm showing. So I'm showing you a pouch of cells here, a pouch of cells here. Okay, try and understand. The green layer, which is now new. You didn't see this type of layer in uh, the previous case. So you see like this. This new layer which is appearing, this is called the mesoderm. What is this? This is mesoderm. Now, what is the problem over here is that this mesoderm is not present close to the ectoderm, close to the endoderm. You find here this th uh, sec third layer, but you find that it is, it is present in pouches. It is present in pouches. So here in this case, what is the condition is, what is the uh, case in this uh, particular thing? You see that there is a cavity. So obviously, what is it? Body cavity is present. So this, this uh, space, this free space, which I've shown with black arrow, this free space is the body cavity and body cavity is present between ectoderm and endoderm. The difference is that it is not lined. It is the cavity, this cavity. You didn't see any cells here. It's not lined. You didn't see any cells here. It is not lined with it's not lined with mesoderm okay how is mesoderm is mesoderm present yes but mesoderm mesoderm is present mesoderm exists but in pouches Okay, that means the mesoderm must line ectoderm and endoderm. Then we will call it something which is a uh, actual coelom, something which is a true coelom. Now, what will what is the term we will use for such a type of body cavity, such a type of coelom? We will call it a pseudo coelom. And the organism will be called pseudo coelomates. So this type of coelom 
means you have a body cavity but this is not a true body cavity what makes it a true body cavity if it is lined by if if ectoderm and endoderm is lined with mesoderm but you don't see mesoderm lining ectoderm and endoderm you see mesoderm existing in pouches that's why you call this coelom what do you call it you call it pseudo coelom and you call such organisms pseudo coelomates the best example for pseudo coelomates the best example are the nematihelminthes or eschelminthes what we call round worms okay so eschelminthes eschelminthes you are round worms are what they are pseudo coelomates okay now what about the true coelom what about the true coelom let me show you here in this particular space because you have to do the comparison also let me show you the case with true coelom for true coelom what do you have let me use this space again i am showing you red color this is which layer try and understand this is ectoderm now let me take the blue color and let me show you the what is this this is the endoderm very good so this is basically the body this ectoderm is form, going to form the body wall this is the gut wall and the central space this is not the body cavity this central space is basically the digestive system of the organism now here what you will see is that mesoderm is present and mesoderm is going to line so you will see a layer of mesoderm below ectoderm okay and see i will keep a cavity also and you do the comparison you you looked at the difference between all of them and i will draw another layer of mesoderm outside endoderm okay so what do you see what is this green colored layer what is this green colored layer what is this and this layer this is the third layer third germ layer which was meso germ okay i hope you are getting the idea now what is in between let me take the black color so i i told you here this was the cavity this this part was representing the cavity body cavity which i used to say it is not true coelom it is pseudo now you have here this cavity which is the true cavity because it is completely lined with mesoderm so you have mesoderm from here you have mesoderm from here you will call this cavity this is the true coelom what is it now if your organism is showing this type of uh, arrangement let me place this in a box if your organism is showing this type of arrangement this type of arrangement which i have kept in a box now if your organism is showing this type of arrangement where you have ectoderm and you have endoderm and you have a lining of mesoderm uh, towards ectoderm and endoderm and you have a cavity in between you call this condition what is the term you can use for this condition you will call this condition a you will call these organisms coelomates and you will call this condition true coelom or you can use the word you coelom so you can simply call them the coelomates because here you have the body cavity body cavity is present is and what else body cavity is present and it is and it is lined with lined with which layer very good it's lined with mesoderm now let me give you another very important information that is once we talk about the you true coelomates once we talk about the actual coelomates which have this type of case this type of case true coelom this can further be divided into two types so you have coelomates further divided into two types you have coelomates of how many types two types on the basis of the origin on the basis of the origin so let me take you to the new uh, screen so once again let us have a look at coelom coelom is going to be the body cavity the body cavity is the coelom you have organism where this body cavity is not present you will call those organisms a coelomates you have organism where body cavity is present but that body cavity is not the true coelom you will call them pseudo coelomates and you have this case where body cavity is present uh, which is lined with mesoderm that do, that case you call uh, coelomates now i am saying that coelomates are further divided into two types so i am i'll write down coelomates could be divided into two types now what is the basis for the division on the basis of how coelom is originating origin of 
on the basis of origin how coelom is originating you can divide this coelomate organism or coelomates into two types okay the first type is the schizocelom schizocel we can use also or coelom or the same thing the second type is the entero entero seal so you have two seal coeloms true coeloms are of two types schizocel and entero seal now what is the difference not so dangerous it's very simple if we talk about schizocel what is the condition over here say for example initially you have say let us let me say that this is now ectoderm here you have now the endoderm and see let me show you now with this red color suppose this is uh, this is the layer of mesoderm okay suppose this this is the point where mesoderm is developing so this mass of cell represents the meso Duh. Now, what do you see happening over here is that the coelom will be formed by splitting of these mesodermal cells. So, what is going to happen is splitting of mesodermal cells. So, you have these cells which will split. They will split like this. Let me show over here now what is going to happen. They are going to split, and pouches are going to arise, and then you have these cells lining those pouches. if your coelom is arising or originating in this manner where you have first of all the mass of the mesodermal cells which are then going to split so how is the coelom going to originate is by means of splitting of the mesodermal cells then you call that coelom schizocelom and you will find this condition you will find this schizocelom condition in case of annelids and hemicordates in these types of organisms you will see how is coelom originating how is this body cavity originating you will first of all have the ectoderm you will have the endoderm the external layer and the internal layer and you will have a mass of mesodermal cells first of all and then what will happen to these mesoderm cells they will split so splitting of mesodermal cells if that gives rise to the coelom then that coelom is called the schizocelom then what is the case with enterocelom here what you see is that uh, here the coelom has let me write down here the coelom it is going to have it is it has a part of archenteron it has a part of archenteron with it that means your, the coelom here is as associated or attached with arc enteron now what is arc enteron arc enteron basically itself so arc enteron itself what is arc enteron we said that the coelom is uh, it has a part of arc enteron but what arc enteron is arc enteron is the cavity of the gastrula arc enteron is the cavity of gas triula remember i have taught you that uh, in case of uh, uh, the or level of uh, organizations back in uh, the previous lecture i gave you idea that uh, during embryonic development we are actually first of all we are zygotes okay when i taught you about the body plan i told you that there we are initially zygotes and then we develop into a ball of cells which is called marula then we develop into a spherical ball like structure which has a cavity we call that structure blastocyst and we call that cavity uh, blastocoel after blastocyst we attain this stage that's called gastrula and in gastrula we have a cavity that's called arc and tenon so during developmental stages during our embryonic development we go through certain stages like we go through uh, marula blastula and gastrula okay these are some uh, some of our developmental stages and in these developmental stages you again have cavities the cavity which is present at gastrula stage that cavity is called arc and tenon and if this arc enteron is a part of the coelom then that coelom is called enterocoel that's the point so entero in case of enterocoel you have uh, here the coelom is going to have this part of arc enteron with it so if your coelom has arc enteron with it you call it enterocoel now which are the organisms which are going to have this kind of coelom the example will be for this case uh, echinoderms 
echinoderms and your chordates they are the organisms which are coelomates they are first of all they are first of all what first of all they are coelomates but they fall in which category enterocele that means their coelom has a part of arc enteron their coelom has a part of arc enteron and what is arc enteron arc enteron is the cavity of the gastrula it is the cavity which is present in our embryonic stage gastrula and if this cavity a part of this cavity is associated with the coelom that coelom is called entero seal now in the next module we will understand about some other bases on which we can divide the diversity of animals till then take care of yourselves assalamu alaikum